Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the Maya to Houdini conversion course. My name is Fahan. I will be running you through some very straightforward um, considerations that you're going to have to go through as you uh, switch from Maya to Houdini. Uh, very quickly, why have I created this course? Why is this course important? I've created this course, I've been a, well I'm a CGI artist, I've been a VFX and CGI artist for over 10 years and I've worked with many, many artists in Maya and as Houdini has gained popularity, a lot of the studios, a lot of the work is, is shifting from Maya to Houdini and a lot of the artists that I'm working with are having kind of teething issues, uh, problems, in that you're so used to doing things in Maya, how do you do those same things in Houdini? What I'm going to do, hopefully in these series of videos, it could be quite a few different videos as we go through this, is to get you from Maya into Houdini, doing all the things that you can do in Maya very quickly, ha doing those same things in Houdini. Um, I'm going to keep these videos short. Name One of the reasons is um, the recording software I'm using doesn't seem to want to let me record. Um, so far it's certainly not letting me get up to 15 minutes so that's why these videos are going to be short and I'll try to put in as much as I can. I'm not going to go too much in depth into Houdini. There's hundreds of videos on the internet, really excellent tutorials that talk to you about what Houdini can do and um, you've probably seen them which is why you've come across my course and why you'll find this is quite uh, relevant. This is one of the only, well, I haven't seen any courses that actually show you how to do things in Houdini that you can do in Maya and how, how to go about changing your, your mindset and your thinking. So this is a, I've written a basic course outline. Um, I, I basically want to do a very simple particle example and build up to that particle example I will be showing you how you can navigate around Houdini, how you can create uh, objects, do very basic things where everything in Houdini lives, where your various Maya operations, how you you can do those in Houdini. So over the course of the next few videos, I'll be working my way through this. Um, I'll certainly try to stick to this as close as I can. And um, we'll probably add loads of extra stuff in there as well. So let's start with part one. I'll quickly introduce myself. My name's Fahan. I'm a CGI artist. Um, there's some of the projects I've worked on. I've primarily worked as a crowd sim. I've worked as a VFX artist, uh, lighter, shader writer, animator, pretty much everything. I've obviously written a couple of movies, produced a few, directed a, a few, uh, been animation, editing, all sorts of different things. I run the website www.digitopiafilm.com where you can, um, I've, it's really a more of a holistic view at CG and VFX, how to put it in your projects, how to cost it, um, lots of tutorials as well, and talking about general um, filmmaking, Things you, things you might want to know. I've also written a book. This is my book, VFX and CG Survival Guide for Producers and Filmmakers, where I talk about VFX and CG from the point of view of a filmmaker. Um, I've got lots of uh, really good reviews on this. Um, and it's gone down very well. So let's jump straight into it, I think. Um, to save time, I've actually created a really simple I was going to walk through this, but I, I think time is quite limited in these videos. So this is basically, I've just created a group of objects and I've translated the group. I've translated individual elements within the group. So I'm going to show you how you do that in Houdini. And while I'm showing you that, we'll um, learn a b few of the basic things. So obviously here you have the outliner your viewport, your channel editor slash attribute editor. You can obviously customize this and you can customize Houdini in many ways, but let's talk about the basic 
simple workflow. So where's Houdini? Here it is. So over here is your viewport. You can rotate using the left button, pan using the middle, and zoom in and out with the right. That's when you have a camera mode. As we switch, you're going to see that this camera mode gets lost. But I will show you how how to get that, how how to lose it if you want to. In the top right, got our attribute editor channel box. In the bottom right, you've got your outliner hypergraph. This, this is essentially a hybrid of an outliner and a hypergraph. Uh, over here, you have your various menus, uh, your shelves, and you can create different things in shelves. Uh, lights, create particles, dry particles. We will show you all of that. If you control click on anything, it will co create that and drop it in. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that as we do this, I can't tumble around. I can't do anything. If I hit, sp that's because I'm in a uh, I'm in editing mode and you can see over here this icon is highlighted if I hit spacebar now watch my camera icon if I hit spacebar now my camera icon and my edit icon are highlighted so spacebar left tumble spacebar middle to pan spacebar right to go in and out let go of spacebar I jump back into edit. If I want to go permanently into camera, I'll just hit escape or I'll click on this. So let's hit escape. And there you are. I'm back. I'm not don't need any uh, modifiers on my keyboard to do these things. So there's a box object and up here on the right, upper right, you have your various controls. Um, again, you can type in here directly. Oops, probably 10 is probably too much. Let's just do two. Um, you can rotate, scale, whatever. Um, I want to show you, if I middle mouse over the word translate, I'll get this thing called a number ladder, which um, is one of the things Houdini has. That number ladder will allow me to go up and down my number ladder, and I can now translate in increments of point 0.1 across all three axes. If I go up my number ladder, I can do it in in whole units and this will allow me to do it in tens so that goes up to 12 and 10 hundreds and I can go down and do things in micro units um, over here I would plug my materials in uh, whatever shaders I wanted to do by hitting this button uh, or choosing one for my navigator uh, my various render settings for this piece of geometry and some miscellaneous items in here um, over here I have my object you see where it says OBJ I'm in object mode one of the differences between mine and Houdini is this idea of context uh, if I was to click on it I could jump into my channel context to do channel operations if I wanted to uh, do some compositing I'd go to image OBJ is where we are out is for that's essentially this is where you control your render settings so that's the same if I jump in there, I will drop a. I, I'm not going to do it now, but we'll do that in the next less in a future lesson. But essentially, this is where I can create different render settings. Just jump back out up to object mode. For that's for particles. That's for shader operations. Shop. That's to write expressions. Um, so that's that was very basic. I haven't actually done anything in the next lesson. We're gonna. I'm going to show you how you can do this in Houdini. It's very straightforward, but I think it's quite important to explain the different concepts. And this next lesson will show you a hell of a lot of stuff that you would get stuck with in Houdini if you didn't know. And um, one of the big frustrations that many people have is, I can do this so easy in Maya, why can't I do it in Houdini? So that will be the next lesson that'd be lesson two thanks so much for watching please share the video please hit like uh, tell other people about this course and um, hopefully we'll get you well on the way to using Houdini as fast as you can use Maya thanks so much bye